Trailblazers, it's Michelle. Today I want to walk you through three reports to use in QuickBooks to help you manage your cash flow. All right, let's dive into QuickBooks Online and um, get started. So the first report we're going to look at is your Accounts Receivable Aging Report. So we're going to click on Reports. And I have mine tagged as a favorite over here with the little star. But if you don't have it marked as a favorite, you can scroll down here to Who Owes You and you'll find it right here. So as we open up our Accounts Receivable Aging Summary Report, this is a great report because it details out all of your customers and which invoices they have not yet paid. So this video is um, assuming that you're using QuickBooks Online to do your invoicing or you're using an app that ties right into QuickBooks Online, so all of your invoicing details are in here. With the technology we have today, there is absolutely no reason for you to be using Excel or Word documents or any other form of manual invoicing. So if you're doing that, stop and start using some technology. It'll make your life a lot easier. Um, but jumping back over to this report, so it details out the customers, and then there's columns here telling you how long or overdue your invoices are. How many days past the due date are they? So as I look through this report, the 60 to 90 days and the 91 and over are the ones that give me the most concern. Once invoices get over 90 days, typically they get very hard to collect. So I would be asking my accountant to be, you know, picking up the phone and calling this vendor to find, or this customer to find out, you know, why they haven't paid, when we can expect this payment. You know, it might just be as simple as they don't have the invoice and we need to send it and we can get paid or they have a question on the invoice or they're upset about the service and this is stuff that you need to deal with. Um, so for today's purposes, you know, we're unsure about this, my accountant's gonna call and follow up on this payment. But I know on average my customers pay about, you know, 45 days after the invoice date. So the ones here in the 30 to 60 column are the ones I'm expecting to come in here in the next week or two. So I can look down here and see, oh, we've got just about $9,500 coming in in the next couple weeks to help cover business expenses. And then if I want to think, you know, into the future as well, I can look, you know, zero to 30 days. These are the ones coming in. And then current invoices, these are the ones open. As you're looking through this report, you'll also kind of start to learn which customers pay when. Maybe I know, you know, the sporting goods store, they always pay you know, as soon as they get their invoice. So this probably will be coming in sooner than later. Um, but this is a great report because you kind of get a snapshot of when money is coming in and, you know, is it coming in soon? Is it coming in in 30 days? Or it might, you know, be coming in in 45 days. The second report I want to show you is the Accounts Payable Aging Summary Report. So kind of opposite of what we just looked at, we just looked at money coming in, now we're gonna look at money going out. So again, I have it starred because I use this report a lot, um, but if you don't have it starred, we'll scroll down here to what you owe, and it's sitting down here in your accounts payable aging summary. So when we pull up this report, you can see these are the bills that um, this business owes to its vendors. So when I sit down to pay bills, and I recommend our clients, you know, don't pay bills as soon as they come in. You get in this kind of nasty cycle of what money comes in, then just turns around and goes out, and it makes it really hard to kind of build up any cash flow reserves. So instead, we suggest doing twice a month um, check runs. The 10th and the 15th are ideal dates. Um, the 1st and the 15th are other dates that clients like to use. And if you're a larger company, definitely once a week. Payable runs are, you know, a good choice for you. So we're going to sit down and pay bills. This is a great report, or if we just want to start planning our cash, this is a great report to see um, all of the vendors that we have bills from and their due dates. So we can see, you know, we owe PG&E. We should probably definitely pay that. That's in the 31 to 60 days. Maybe we didn't have enough cash last time we paid bills, and that's why this one is getting pushed out. Um, so we're going to pay that this time around. Maybe this one came in late. Um, all sorts of reasons why it could be, you know, a little overdue. 
And then the rest are, you know, sitting here in the one to 30 days. So these are going to be the bills that we're going to plan to pay here in the next couple of weeks, probably in our next check run so that we don't pay vendors late. Um, and so kind of comparing the last report to this report, this shows, you know, in our next check run, we're planning to pay about $8,000 in vendor bills. The accounts receivable report showed 9,500 in money coming in. So we should have just enough to pay these bills. Now, keep in mind, this is a total simplified version of money coming in, money coming out. This accounts repayables report does not calculate or account for payroll coming in the future, payroll taxes, debt payments, and other bills like that. So if you have, you know, payroll, you also need to be kind of mentally thinking. So if we have payroll next week and we have, you know, 9,500 coming in and let's say our payroll is 8,000, then we can't pay all of these bills. You know, we only have 1,500 left that we can pay. So maybe we can pay, you know, Robertson and Associates in the next run and then these two bills will get paid on the following run. All right, the third report I want to show you is kind of an often overlooked report because a lot of people don't understand it. Um, so we're going to go over here to reports. We're going to scroll down to business overview and click on statement of cash flows. The cool thing about this report is it answers that age old question every business owner asks is, how come my net income or my profits show that I had $60,000 in profits? and I only have $4,000 in my checking account. I'm guessing you have asked this question to your accountant before. This report answers that question for you. So this report right now is being run through as of today. So as of today, um, we've got net income and then it's gonna reconcile all these differences, most of them come off of your balance sheet, to tell you how you get at your current bank account balance. So these are adding or subtracting the differences in these accounts over time. I'll record another video going in more depth into this report because there's a lot going on here, but in a nutshell, I'll kind of explain the first couple of rows so you can kind of understand how this report is working. All right, so we have the first line is accounts, or the first line is your net income. So this number is coming right off of your um, P&L or your income statement. And then you're going to come down here to your accounts receivable line item. This is money that you have invoiced to customers. So it's in your net income number. However, you have not collected that cash yet. So we need to back it out of net income in order to get to your cash balance. And this report, this number is um, the difference between the last the beginning balance, so um, December 31st and when you ran this report, which is kind of funky, um, but that's what it's doing. So if you try to go and get this number off your accounts receivable report, it's not going to match that number. So that's just kind of a quick explanation. Okay, so we need to back out your accounts receivable because again, this number includes the sales because we've sent the invoice out, but we have not yet collected it. So if we're going to put this number to cash, we need to back it out. Inventory. Inventory is a good one to look at. We've already paid the expense out. We've probably already paid our vendor. However, inventory sits on your balance sheet until you sell that product. And then as is expensed, is the cost of goods sold? So right now, this number does not include any inventory. Even though we've paid for the inventory, this number doesn't have the expense yet, so we need to back out inventory out of this to reconcile net income down to our cash balance. And then one more to look at real quick is your accounts payable. So kind of the same thing, the accounts payable, you have um, the expense in your net income because we've created a bill for that vendor, we've recorded the expense. However, we have not paid these expenses, so these Expenses have not been deducted out of our checking account yet. So we're going to add accounts payable back into our net income number to adjust for cash. And then the same thought process, and you can kind of go through all the rest of the um, 
the line items on this report thinking in the same manner. How has it affected net income? Do we need to add or subtract it back to net income to reconcile net income to cash? But this is a super tool to help you understand why your profit number is different from your cash number. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. Hit subscribe to um, be alerted when future videos get posted. We do a lot of QuickBooks Online videos and other videos to help you grow your profits and build wealth in your business. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.